Hi and welcome back once again to LDF Designs Art. Today I am going to finish up these three pieces, continuing on with my big texture series. These are 5x5 five five panels that I had put some concrete plaster fabric and metal items on. I let all of that dry very well and at this point I am just starting to add the encaustic layers. I added some different pigment powders to some of the plaster and concrete when I laid it down on the surface and that's where the color is coming from that you're seeing on the surface. At this point I'm going to use some RNF um, Cerulean Gray and it is a semi-transparent color so I'm using it in small amounts just to kind of push some of that back. If you're interested in seeing how I started these panels, I'll put the link in the description down below for where I um, put those, began the assembly on these panels a few weeks ago. I have some tar with a little bit of vegetable oil in a cup that I just used randomly to fill in and add color to the texture that I've created. And this also just helps to pull all of the different pieces of it, of the um, art together. I have some fabric with staples in it in the middle of this piece and I wanted to create some extra texture with the encaustic so I let that cool a little bit on the brush and now I am just building up the layers of wax in a random pattern. I started off by adding some more of the tar into this texture and then I decided I wanted to pull my pigment powders over that I used um, in the under layers and add that to the tar and see what kind of colors and interest I could get by mixing those two materials. As much as it is possible, I do recommend when you're dealing with the pigment powders to use a mask if you so choose, and then also to just always make sure you put the lid back on your pigment powders when you're not using them. Pigment powders and um, alcohol inks and India inks are kind of the same in that they seem to multiply. <laughs> no matter how little you're trying to use, it just seems like it gets everywhere. At this point, I'm going to just continue adding a few more layers of encaustic, fusing in between, of course, to make sure that those layers are bonded well. I don't scrape my layers back as often as some artists. It is an interesting way to pull some more detail into your um, piece of art but I did like some of the things that was that were happening underneath and felt like that uh, gray encaustic was covering it up a little too much. I also wanted to try a transfer and wanted to make sure that the surface of the encaustic was smooth so after I scraped it I just used my finger to create a little bit of heat and smooth out the surface of that. Then I took a charcoal pencil on some parchment paper and made some marks and again using my finger or a spoon I'm just burnishing that mark onto the warm wax and the image will transfer onto the surface of the wax.
once it transfers you do want to do a light fuse but you do want to be cautious if you over fuse it you will blow the marks out which if you're wanting that look is great um, but you want to be careful if you don't want to move those marks around to fuse very lightly. I had that piece pretty much where I wanted it to go so I decided to pull the second piece um, onto the table and start working it doing pretty much the same thing. Going to put down some early layers of encaustic to build on, uh, fuse that in, and this piece I used also some pigment powders in the plaster when I made the original under layers, and um, it had a little bit of a darker tone to it, so I decided as I worked this one to pull out my black uh, pigment powder and use that with the tar to see what kind of um, interest I could create with that. This piece has a lot more texture on it than the first piece did and so as I was trying to pull back some of that uh, tar and pigment powder and vegetable oil mixture, it was really shredding up my paper towel a lot. Um, I tried dipping the paper towel back into the, just the vegetable oil to try to help clear some of the dark color off of there. Um, but just be forewarned that if you're working with these types of materials, they they are a very rough surface and um, it will shred your some of your paper towels and things that you're using on the surface. I was kind of trying to decide which way I wanted to go with this piece, but in keeping with the theme um, from the first piece, decided to go ahead and put some gray onto this one as well. And so here I will be adding those layers and then scraping a little bit of it back off. At this point, once I got this color mixture on here, I realized that um, I didn't have quite as much texture for it to sink into um, and fill in as I thought I did. So I pulled out this little tool. I got this tool in a kit, um, and it basically is a metal brush. So was working on trying to put some lines and marks into these areas with this brush. Um, I wasn't quite going deep enough into the wax. So it took me a few tries to get to get the the grooves in there. Cleaning the surface of this particular piece was definitely fiddly. I spent a lot of time trying to wipe it back. And again, um, gave those marks a light fuse. You can kind of see the lines in there. I had shut the camera off and ended up adding a few more marks to this one and splashed it with a little bit of white encaustic and that pretty much ended the piece here. And I decided to go ahead and start on the third piece. This one also has a lot of surface texture and a lot of different colors from my underpayment, uh, under painting, in which I used, again, the pigment powders with the plaster. I 
I was attempting to create a little more texture with the encaustic on this piece as well, um, but my encaustic was too warm and it didn't create it quite as much as I would have liked. I grabbed a couple of little plastic tools um, from my little toolkit. Again, just creating some different interest and marks into this area and filling that in um, with the tar. I decided on this one not to add the uh, pigment powders. There were some really neat things happening in the different layers of encaustic with all of the underpainting that I had there. And I didn't want to cover it up too much. That just about does it for this one. I have pictures of these over on my Instagram wall. I did add a little bit of metallic to the surface once I was done. Thank you for joining me today. Give me a like and a subscribe.